Essex was an American whaling ship from Nantucket, Massachusetts. In 1799, Essex was launched. She was known as a fortunate ship because she had successful journeys over her first 20 years of existence, despite being only 88 feet long. Each of the four whaleboats that Essex possessed was around 28 feet long, and she also carried a fifth whaleboat below decks. Captain George Pollard, Jr., and first mate Owen Chase had served on the ship's last voyage. Pollard was one of the youngest captains of a whaling ship at the age of 29. Thomas Nickerson, the cabin boy, is 14 years old, whereas Chase is 23 years old. On August 12, 1819, Essex sailed from Nantucket on a journey that would take her nearly two and a half years to reach the famous whaling grounds off the west coast of South America. The crew consisted of 21 people. The majority were white men, but some were free black men. Two days after she left Nantucket, a storm caused damage to the Essex and wiped off two of the whaleboats, which were 20. Foot open boats commanded by six men when actively hunting a whale. While several sailors were uneasy and wondered whether the storm had been a bad omen, Captain Pollard decided to continue round Cape Horn without replacing the two boats or making repairs to the damage. In September of 1820, when the ship was off the northern coast of what is now Ecuador, Seaman Henry DeWitt abandoned the Essex. The crew was short-staffed at this point. DeWitt's absence meant that just two sailors were left on board the Essex during hunts as the whale boats required a crew of six men and the three boats were launched simultaneously. In order to run a ship of Essex's size and kind in a safe manner, this meant that there would only be two men remaining to maintain Essex while a whale hunt was underway. Following another whaling team's advice, Captain Pollard decided to travel 2,500 nautical miles offshore to a remote location. After the population of whales along this section, the South American coast had been decimated. Pollard prepared the ship for its new location despite some of the crew's concerns about cannibals rumored to be on islands near there targeted hunting grounds. The crew of the Essex went to Charles Island, where they caught tortoises to feed themselves while they were away from shore. Another sinister occurrence during their stay at Charles Island added to the crew's anxiety. Thomas Chapel, the helmsman, started a fire on the coast, and the island was swiftly consumed by a fire due to the dry circumstances. After the Essex arrived at her planned hunting area, the crew's anxiety persisted. Arguments started to develop between Pollard and his first mate, Chase, when the Essex went days without seeing a whale. The first whale was seen on November 16, 1820, but it damaged Chase's whaleboat since it surfaced just beneath it. On the bright morning of November 20, 1820, the sound of splintering would echoed across the ocean hundreds of kilometers off the western coast of South America. A large male bull sperm whale was barely beneath the waves and facing the ship while Chase was working on this whaleboat on the Essex's deck. The Essex's deck men attempted to shoot, but the whale used his blubber as power 
as he rammed his body against the ship's hull. The whale slammed the boat's hull while it was moving at around six knots, breaking through the oak timbers and bringing it to a complete halt in the water. The whale passed beneath it and surfaced to starboard. Before striking the Essex, the whale then swam in front of the ship while facing her once more. The crew calculated that the whale, an extraordinarily huge creature that measured 85 feet from head to fluke, was not much longer than the Essex. The whaling ship, which was already old for its day, was rapidly filling with salt water and had a hole in its bow that was wider than the whale's gigantic mouth. The Essex started to sink bow first after the second blow, which was her last blow. Chase reportedly recalled the Essex's last moments as described in the following. I turned around and saw the whale, about 100 rods directly ahead of us, coming down with twice his ordinary speed of around 24 knots, and it appeared with tenfold fury and vengeance in his aspect. The surf flew in all directions about him with the continual violent thrashing of his tail, his head about half out of the water, and in that way, he came upon us and again struck the ship. The three undamaged whale boats, each of which was commanded by a different person, Pollard Chase or second mate Matthew Cho, divided the group into smaller groups. Only a little amount of food and water to drink were recovered from the Essex by the crew, but they had been able to take the rigging and navigational equipment. Pollard suggested they travel in the direction of the Marquesas Islands after reviewing marine maps rescue from the Essex. Chase, however, expressed concerns on behalf of the crew over the rumored presence of cannibals in the vicinity. Pollard finally gave up and the damaged fleet set off for South America. The men aboard the three boats, which severely dehydrated them eventually, turned to drinking their own pee and consuming food that had been soaked in seawater. It was also reported that an orca whale attacked one of the whale boats. On December 20th, the whale boats made their way to Henderson Island, an unoccupied island, giving the men a little relief. The group survived for six days on food and drink from an island's freshwater spring. On December 26, after the 20 men had consumed all the resources on hand, the majority of the crew, however, made the decision to depart Henderson Island in need of a more long-term solution. Thomas Chapel, Seth Weeks, and William Wright made the decision to remain on the island. They were brought to Australia by a passing ship after being trapped for around 11 months. On December 27th, the 17 men who had chosen to take another shot at the open sea set out from Henderson Island towards Easter Island. On January 4th, the crew realized they had missed the island because they had sailed to far south. The crew started to perish after suffering from malnutrition, dehydration, and exposure to the weather for a month and a half. Matthew Joy, the second mate, was the first to pass away. Obed Hendricks took over command of the yacht in his place. On January 11th, a storm caused Chase's boat to become separated from the others. On January 18th, Richard Peterson, a sailor on Chase's whaleboat, passed away. He was buried at sea. On February 8th, however, when Isaac Cole passed away, the crew members of Chase's boat kept their friend's remains inside. They thought about it and determined that the only option 
was to consume him. Chase later wrote, after making the difficult choice, the men separated limbs from his body and cut all the flesh from the bones, after which we opened the body to took out the heart and then closed it again, sewed it up as decently as we could and committed it to the sea. As their food supplies ran out, the men and the two other whale boats were forced to make the same impossible decision. Lawson Thomas, a seaman, perished while aboard Hendrick's whale boat, and his body was stored there for food. Sailors Charles Shorter, Isaiah Shepard, and Samuel Reed all passed away shortly after Thomas. The three men on Hendrick's boat were never heard from again after his whaleboat and Pollard's whaleboat were split apart on January 28th. Three skeletons from a whaleboat were subsequently found washed up on an island, although it was never determined with certainty that the bones belong to the Essex men. On February 1st, the situation on Pollard's whaleboat had gotten so bad that the men could no longer wait for each other to pass away naturally. To decide who would be slain for their flesh, the sailors drew lots. The captain's 18-year-old cousin owned coffin created a piece of paper with a black stain on it to indicate that he would be the one to pass away. Coffin reportedly answered, No, I enjoy my lot as well as any other, in response to Captain Pollard's argument that he should be murdered rather than his cousin. Pollard and the sailors Charles Ramstall and Barzillai Ray were the only survivors after Coffin was shot. Ray passed away ten days later. A British ship named Indian discovered Chase's whaleboat on February 18th off the coast of Chile. A few days prior, the three survivors on Chase's boat had run out of food. Pollard and Ramstall were saved by the whaling ship Dauphin 93 days after the ship sank on February 18th off the coast of South America. The two men allegedly were discovered sucking the bones of their dead messmates, which they were loath to part with. In the end, eight sailors, including the three men who had left behind on Henderson Island, escaped the Essex's destruction. Although several of them had traumatic memories, they all eventually returned to the sea. Only eight months had passed since Captain Pollard returned to Nantucket when he embarked on a new journey. Following the Essex, Pollard led the two other ships that also sunk, earning him a reputation for misfortune. Despite the favorable public perception of the Essex survivors, Pollard had to deal with animosity at home for eating his own relative. Pollard stopped whaling because of his tragedy at sea and the tension on shore and instead started working as a night watchman in Nantucket. Eventually, Chase became the owner of a whaling ship and he spent the rest of his life at sea. In his later years, he was admitted to the hospital as a result of the months he spent starving at sea and he developed the habit of storing food in his attic. On November 20th each year, Pollard and Chase reportedly fasted in memory of their lost crewmates. The tragedy gained widespread notice, and the event served as the inspiration for Moby Dick, a well-known book by Herman Melville which he wrote in 1851. The end.